Okay, and we are now live on Facebook. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. That's our typical little introduction, isn't it? Because this is uh, blasting all over the globe right now. And uh, my name is Stephen Herder. I'm with ITDI. And I'm Phil Brown with ITDI. And, and our special guest is Mr. Paul Rain. Hello, Paul. Hi, I'm happy to be here and I'm with Teacher Tools and I'm operating with ITDI. Yay. Fantastic. So this is a special event tonight. It's an ITDI webinar. Please join us for our monthly roundups, which you'll get notification of. But this is a special event because we like Paul a lot. We love what he's doing and we wanted to spread the the love a little bit. So we hope that you'll uh, join us for the next hour where we look at uh, Teacher Tools Digital, uh, which is an, on, uh, an online website that uh, provides special activities that Paul, I'm gonna ask Paul about. We're gonna do a very short introduction into Teacher Tools. Then Paul's gonna whip us through uh, a number of the different activity types. And then I'm going to try as your average Joe Schmo teacher to actually replicate what Paul's done. And that's going to be kind of our flow for the, uh, the next little while. If we have time, we hope to invite some of you into our uh, Zoom room where we're meeting and have a little live question and answer with Paul. Okay. Phil, is there anything else that you want to add there before we get started? Uh, no, that's all except, yes, we've known Paul for probably just over a decade now and wow. seen the different developments he's had. Uh, this is probably the third project that I've seen you do. And so it's mm -hmm. really exciting to see the developments and see where you've got to now. Thank you. So we're going to actually, um, we... Uh, Phil put out a survey early in the week and we had a number of people respond to that. And so we're gonna follow some of their recommendations for which of these activities that we're gonna follow. But before we get there, let's start with Paul. Um, Paul, do you wanna tell us uh, in, in your couple of sentences what Teacher Tools is? So Teacher Tools is an online platform for creating digital language uh, digital language teaching and learning activities. Mm -hmm. So it started actually a long time before COVID became a thing. Yeah. Um, and obviously now it's, it's uh, nobody has a choice to do paper-based activities. If you're teaching uh, online or uh, if you're teaching remotely, uh, paper-based is no longer even a, an option. And I, I know we're going to be going back to paper-based activities, but even, even when paper-based activities are an option, uh, digital are often superior in, in, in many ways. Yeah, and I'm the same way that mm -hmm. I, I hope to go back to face to face, but I'm bringing a lot of these tools along with me that I've had to learn in the past uh, COVID time because they're just better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you had told me when I was doing a little bit of my homework, you told me there were basically three things that made your uh, teacher tool is quite unique. And I'm going to throw you a word. And if you can just um, unpack what that means. Sure but um, uh, you, the first one was called paperless, mm -hmm. but as easy as paper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, it's, uh, teacher tools is entirely paperless. So you create the assignment online, you administer the assignment online, and students submit the assignment online. So that's completely paperless from end to end. But uh, the, the easiest paper bit means uh, if you, people who are familiar with using an LMS, a, a learner management system, yep. there's, all, there's all kinds of, uh, of convoluted, what we call onboarding procedures, where students have to sign up. If they forget their password, they can't log in. Uh, you know, if, if their email address is wrong, they can't log in and all that kind of stuff. So we have a login less system for students. So the teacher logs in creates the assignment and then the, the system generates a URL and the student simply inputs the URL to access and submit the assignment. Hmm. Uh, which is your, goes right into the second, the second point, which is that no accounts. Mm -hmm. And I've, I know I, I used to put my students on uh, Google forms mm -hmm. and it was a nightmare because mm -hmm. first of all, they had to have a Gmail account back then. Mm -hmm. And then it was logging in. And, and so that's the, the second uh, 
was that difficult to do or was that easy to set up on your end? Um, yeah, so it, it was relatively easy to set up. And there's also there's also three different modes uh, that teachers can choose from. One is uh, completely anonymous submissions. So if you have your own website for your school or for your class and you want students just to practice without knowing who they are, you can do you can do that. The okay. second is uh, students can submit their name when they submit the assignment. So they access the, the, the assignment, they complete, they, they do the work and then they submit it. And when they submit it, they input their name. And the third one is actually to have a predefined list of submitters. So that's uh, a little bit more convenient when you're, when you're tracking grades across a long period of time, for instance, a, a semester 15 weeks. Um, you don't want students to be inputting their name every time they submit an assignment. So we allow you to specify a predefined list of submitters. Cool. Um, and the third point, is that um sorry phil were you coming in so i was just saying it makes it, it sounds like it makes it very convenient mm -hmm. we hope it does <laughs> that's the that's the idea and we've tried to cut out all of the extraneous stuff that people don't need and just keep keep the, the core of stuff that is essential to having a, an efficient uh, workflow hmm. um, and finally the third one that i've written down here is multi-context multi-device mm -hmm. can you explain what that's about Yep, so multi-context refers to uh, online teaching, face-to-face -face teaching, hybrid teaching, and blended teaching. So all of those different contexts of teaching. I think hybrid as a concept really only came about post-COVID. So hybrid has been a, 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 a quite highly despised way of operating, actually. Yes. What I, what, I, what I can gather reading different forum posts and things. Uh, we don't recommend uh, a hybrid mode of teaching, but we do teacher tools can be used in that situation. Uh, it can also be used uh, in blended curriculums and in flipped curriculums. So if you want students to say, read a text um, before the class and then come to the class to, to discuss the text, you can, you can use teacher tools for, for that as well. And if you, of course, if you're completely online, uh, it's a great solution. If you're face-to-face, if you're -face, it still has um, a, a lot of functions that you'll find useful as well. Cool. Um, Sorry, uh, we're going to move right into our activities for the night. Phil, I just want to ask you, I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing the, the Facebook on my iPad mini. Are you in no there worries. doing OK? Yep, I keep an eye on things. Just so we've got teachers, uh, about 40 teachers in the room. Thank you very much for joining us and saying hi in the comments, letting us know where you're from. Teachers from uh, Peru, uh, Philippines, Ukraine, Indonesia, Afghanistan, Japan, Algeria and um, wow. more so thank you very much it's great to have you with us as well so phil until if i'm able to get it up uh here with the uh, get the um facebook live to show on my ipad mini that'll be great but if not uh until you hear back from me please jump in with uh nice comments and um uh, any pertinent questions okay yes and thank anyone you. who's watching if you have questions uh, please do feel free to put them in the comments and i will pass them on to paul and steve thank you you're welcome okay so paul let's um let's share your screen and take us to take a quick peek at the site teacher tools yep so this is what teachers will uh will, will see the first time they access the site uh www.teachertools.digital so not .com or .net uh, .digital please go ahead and access the site and then you'll be able to sign up for an account. Uh, click on the big green, uh, the big green, the big orange button <laughs> in the top right and it will give you uh, several choices. We have a, a one month free trial so you can try out all the functionality of the site completely for free for 30 days. Um, so go ahead and do that. And I then, love that no credit card required. That's nope. the biggest scam <laughs> normally people getting your credit card and forcing you. So right. that's great. That's a great. And then you forget trial. to, you forget to cancel. Right. And it just starts yep. charging. Yep. you. Yeah. We, we don't oh. do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, Good man. Yep. So you click here to start the free trial. So www.tutorials.digital click on um, sign up, go down to uh, start free trial. And then once you've done that, um, it will allow you to log into the site, either using your Google account or your Microsoft account. So those, those are the two um, uh, services that we use to authenticate login, Google or Microsoft. Great. Yeah. Okay, so then take us over to see what the teacher sees when they, oh, here we are. Yep, here we go. So this is logged into a, a new account and a new folder. So Teacher Tools operates on the concept of having folders for your different assignments. 
Okay. Um, we, we do recommend and suggest that you, if you have a, multiple classes, that you have one folder for each class. Um, but one could, folder for each class. Got it. One folder for each class. You could use folders for different things, um, but I think having one folder for each class is one of the most convenient ways to organize your, your assignments. Cool. Um, I, I tell you, I've been, uh, like I said earlier, I've been using Google, uh, Google documents and stuff for writing, but it's been such a hassle when mm -hmm. I heard about the, the simplicity uh, mm -hmm. and the functionality of yours. I was eagerly interested in the written report. If we could start there. Yep. Now, for everybody in the audience, uh, Paul moves quicker than most humans on this planet. <laughs> and so he's going to run through how mm -hmm. to set something up. And then um, I've seen this once, but I'm going to come in after and try to do the same thing as a teacher going through the learning curve. So yep. you ready to take us through, Paul? Let's try it, let's try it, okay. So when you first log into Teacher Tools, you're gonna to be looking at your dashboard. Um, my dashboard already has several folders on it, but yours will be blank. Yeah. So you have to go ahead and create a new folder and put the folder name in here and then click on okay. Um, I've done that already. I've got a folder here called ITDI, which I'm gonna click on. Yep. And then that will bring you to the assignment creation screen. <laughs> Okay, so from the assignment creation screen, you're going to see different, nine different types of assignments. Okay. Um, the first one we're going to look at write, uh, written report. So we go ahead and click on that, and that will open the written report um, assignment creation panel. Now, what you need to do to create a new written report is to put in, first of all, the title for the report. So I'll just put in my report. Uh, and then you, after the next section, you get to choose a media prompt. A media prompt can be uh, an audio file, a video file, image, PDF, rich text formats, uh, or an embedded iframe. Um, I think most of these are self-explanatory. Self Perhaps these last two are a little complicated, so I'll, I'll just explain these. Rich text format is basically allows you to kind of create um, your own uh, formatted document to attach to the assignment. And uh, embedded iframe allows you to embed uh, content from another site. Okay. Like a YouTube video? A YouTube video. We can also um, embed vid uh, YouTube by going to the video option and then clicking okay. on YouTube. Earl. But for yep. example, some people might have, I don't know, Quizlet uh, sets or other media from other sites they want to embed. You can do that um, using this uh, option here. Okay. So um, yeah. We're supposed to slow down just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> So you can, you. you can embed any kind of media prompt that you want. So one- one. You don't have video, to, of course, right? You no, you don't have to. You can yeah. leave it on no media. Yeah, uh, let's and you put a picture a, in or something. A written prompt. Let's put a picture in, because that's a, a good way to, a good written activity is to, just, to describe a picture, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go click on image. I'd like then, you to see if there's a picture of Canada, because that's what I'm going to try on okay. mine when I go through this. Okay, I'll do that. And then- um, You'll see that there's actually a search function built into the site, which is quite a, a convenient way to find an image. Yep. So I'm just going to put in Canada. Good spelling. You got it. Yep. yep. <laughs> I struggled there for a second. Oh, I like that uh, top I've, left one. I've got some nice pictures. Okay, that's a, that's a beautiful picture of Canada. Okay, hey. so click on that. And that will embed that photograph directly into the assignment. Oh. Okay, that's done then. Uh, and then I have to specify a text prompt. So this is... Mm kind of my instructions to the student of what they should do, right? Mm. So the so, one I'm going to do is why study abroad? That's what I'm going to try. What are the good points? What what's the benefits of studying abroad? And that's why I chose Canada. Oh, OK. So shall I do the same, the same thing then? If or? you like, sure, sure, whatever. Yeah. Um, many students uh, study abroad in countries such as Canada. Let's start with Australia. Hmm. UK or Canada, uh, which of these would you prefer to go to? How's hmm. that? Nice. Okay, um, so that's my prompt. The next thing I have a few different options for the assignment. I can set a time limit. So if I want students to respond um, within say 30 minutes, I can just yep. set this slider to 30 minutes. Yeah, that's um, what I normally do with mine. It's about a 30 minute, like the TOEFL IBT. Uh -huh. A lot of these standardized uh, IELTS is also 30 minutes. Yep, so 30 minutes is a good, a good length of time. Let's let's go with 30 minutes. Yep. 
And after that, we, we, we have this auto grading panel. OK, so let, let me quickly explain the, the idea behind the auto grading. The auto grading is not intended to completely replace a human grader. Let me start by saying that. OK, it's intended to give you a thumbnail sketch of the quality and the extent of the response the student has submitted. And it does that by looking at um, the number of target words that you've specified in the settings. Yep. And it compares the number of target words to the number of words the student actually wrote in their response. Okay. okay. So if the target word count is 100 and the student wrote 100 words and they were all spelled correctly, they would get 100% for, the, for that Got it. grade, right? But that's, that's, not, that's not the be all and end all. There could be other things that you want to assess, like did they answer the question? Or, you know, did they, you have your own rubric, you can, yes, yes. You can still use your own rubric. Okay. Did they use, you know, good arguments or reasons or details? Exactly. And those are the kind of things that we can't really uh, assess with computers yet, you know, right. without very, very powerful AI systems, you know. So, so again, the best way of thinking about this is a thumbnail sketch of the quality and the extent of the response. It's a starting point, isn't it? Starting point, yeah. Good. So I'm going to set, set that to 100 words because okay. I want students to try to write at least 100 words. Okay. Okay. Um, if they, they can write more than that, this is, this is a target word count, not a maximum. Right. So they, they can write more than that. Um, uh, so the next, next function is, I think many students will, many teachers will find very useful. Uh, it's a, allows you to, to disable the, the copy and paste feature. Right. So I think many teachers have started recently worrying about um, the effects or the way that students are using machine translation, for example. Yeah. And if they're copying and pasting directly from machine translation into, you know, some online essay submission without even reading the translation, mm. um, you can prevent them from doing that with this feature. Okay. And uh, also, of course, plagiarism could, could be potentially prevented or reduced using this feature sure, as well. Sure. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, shall I enable this or shall I disable it? Um, let's do enable for yours. I'm going to do okay. disable for mine. So disable means copy and paste will, will not be possible. Then let's leave it there. Yeah. Okay. All right. And the last thing is a grammar check. So um, again, this is to help, to help uh, save teachers time. Uh, I'll preface this again by saying it does not detect every single error type under the sun. Right. Um, but it does detect around 4,500 different kinds of errors. So it's normally plenty. Um, it normally gives quite a lot of feedback depending on the yep. length of the response, you know, mm. and uh, the student can see the feedback immediately after submitting their response. Great. Okay. So we'll leave that turned on. Yeah. And then the essay language, um, you have to set to leave, leave set on English. Yeah. I'm assuming everyone in the audience is an English teacher. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> but we do support other languages as well. So that's a, that's a, that's worth thinking about yeah and then you go ahead and click on save and that's the assignment is done it's been created right yeah it's been created and you'll see that you, you get three new uh, you get three new buttons at the bottom of the page you get preview copy link and show qr okay so if you want if you want students to submit the assignment now all you have to do is copy the link and provide the link to students in whichever way is most convenient for you yeah, could be could be through your LMS. It could be through email. It could be through Zoom. Yeah, uh, whatever. Yeah, and QR code I use a lot as well now. Um, that, yeah, students yeah. can pick that up off the screen or run up to my computer and pick it up. Exactly, and I mean for, for written report maybe it's not so good because you don't want them typing essays on the, on their phone. Yeah, um, but for yeah. things like audio recording, which we're going to talk about later, that's a really convenient way for them to submit an audio recording. So, yeah. yeah, I actually had a couple of students who had nothing but their iPhone last year, and they, in fact, were doing essays, which I couldn't believe, but they seemed pretty <laughs> amazing. Well, it, it, I, it is possible. I mean, I, I've also generation done gap. I've, I've done that in, in I, I've done that in my own classes. You know, I, yeah. because students only have mobile devices, so yeah. it is possible um but hmm. maybe it's not not common yeah so let's look at the preview button yep so this is what students will see now when they when they access that url that's that, that was generated yeah uh, so what i've done on this particular assignment is i'm requesting the students input their name only okay so to submit the assignment the student has to input their name and then click on start 
and then you get the picture, uh, yep. you get the start button, and you get the place to input the, the text for the assignment. Mm. And down here, you'll see word count, minimum words, target words, and the time. Yep. So as soon as I click start, the time starts to count down. And as mm. soon as I start typing, the number of the word count will go up. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm breaking the rules here just for a minute. Uh, uh, Phil, can you um, see how clear this is? Do you, do you want people to, uh, do people want me to start from the beginning with this one? Or I have a student's essay that we could just copy and paste into here. Can you get a, ask that question on the Facebook Live, please, mm -hmm. Phil? Sure. So um, in the chat, uh, yep. if you're watching on Facebook, please let us know if you're happy to work with a sample or essay that mm -hmm. one of Steve's students has already written, or whether you'd like to see him quickly type something and see. How no, no, it... not typing, but for me to okay. actually open my page and go back to the very beginning. I see. And Would do the like... whole thing over again, whether they need that or not. I'm just wondering. Uh, I thought Paul was. Um, pretty clear. That's Sometimes good. going through it again is very helpful. Right. So I mean, if you'd I... like to see the steps again one more time or uh, whether you'd like to just proceed, you can uh, uh, type into the chat. Um, I'll go ahead. What were you going to say? Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say I can demonstrate some of the errors that are detected if that's uh, something people are interested in. in well, I've got I've got an essay right here in our in our. Um, oops, in our. Um, Okay, we've got a couple of people who'd like to maybe go back and see what happens from Steve's side. Okay, well, let me let okay. me do that then. Is that uh, okay? Other people yep. say that he was pretty clear or very clear, in fact. Yep. So, <laughs> well, maybe just maybe just uh, if you go ahead and, and copy and paste that essay that you've got, Steve, so we can show what that looks like from the student point of view and yeah, and, and the kind of feedback they get. Yeah. Okay. That okay, so I'll stop sharing. Everyone to see. Okay. Okay. And. Just while you're copying and pasting that, um, there's a couple of questions came in. Mm -hmm. What about areas where internet connection with uh, has a lot of glitches? Can teacher tools be used um, asynchronously? Uh, yes, it can be used asynchronously. You can uh, administer the, the link for homework, for example. Right. I mean, it, 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 will, it will operate as, as well as any other website would in, in, in those circumstances. Right. And there are some tools that have been developed in recent years to also make copies of the internet, right? Uh, I think one was called Rachel. We shared something about mm -hmm. that fairly recently mm -hmm. so that you can use it without having an internet connection. It works as a kind of a hub. Mm -hmm. And that's Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L, I believe. We can share the link later. Mm -hmm. One other question was, how can a teacher make sure the learners are interested in content? And obviously, in face-to-face -face interaction, the teacher can have some body language signals and so on. Um, but online, we have some additional challenges. Uh, are they talking about content that you generate through teacher tools or content in general? Um, yeah, I, mean, I think I think in content here, you're saying what you've shown us, Paul, is the the content is up to the teacher to select. That's correct, right? Right, right. I mean, it, it, we, we do have some pre-made content available, which is ranked to different CEPHA levels, for example, which I, I can maybe show at the end if we have time. Um, but the, it's teacher tools and it's, it's the tool, it's what you do with the tool. You know, it, it's, a, it's up to you to really find content that is suitable for your students' interests and, le and, and ability level. Yes. Yeah. And the teacher in the classroom is going to be the person who knows that best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, Thank you. I'm having a problem here that um, I'm not getting any reaction. Oh, you're sharing, oh, you mean with the screen sharing or? Yeah, I go into the screen sharing. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sharing my screen, you see. Mm -hmm. And when I go into the uh, written report, I'm getting a black screen come up. Okay. Uh, well, what I demonstrate from my side. Yes, you should. Um, yeah. And you... that's my computer problem, I'm sure. <laughs> could you could you paste the um, the text that maybe you want to use into the chat, and then I can copy it from there. I tried that as well, and it's not um, it's not how. Let me try one more time. I've copied it. There's I'm a good in... question here for Paul as well. Whilst we're just waiting for Steve. 
Um, can teachers share assignments with each, with other teachers? They can indeed, yes. So if you go, uh, hang on, I just need to share my screen again, don't I? Oh, go ahead. Uh, if you go to um, an assignment that you've created and you click on uh, the, the, the blue button to the left, you'll see a little export option. When you click on that, it gives you a code. Um, if you give that code to another teacher, um, they can then import that into their account by clicking on this blue button to the right here and they copy and paste that code that will allow them to import the assignment that you've created into their account. Nice. So, yes, it's very then, easy to share assignments, yeah. That's brilliant. Will they then be able to edit it as well? That's right. When they've imported it, um, it's their assignment. So it, it's a copy of the original, but it, it doesn't affect the original. So okay. it has all the, all the content. The, the submissions are not copied. Uh, and when new submissions come in, they will go to the new copy and not the old copy. Right. Yeah. So there's a couple of other platforms that I really like too, because I can take things, quizzes, for example, that other teachers have made and I can mm -hmm. import them and then I can edit them if I want to. So, right. Uh, right. Yeah. You can do that with teacher tools as well. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So what I've been able to do, Paul, is yep. in our Facebook messenger messages, mm -hmm. I was able to paste it into there. Okay, I was it would not allow me to paste it into our Zoom chat. And maybe it was too long or something. Yeah, okay, I've got it here now. Okay, let, let, me, let me copy and paste this. Yeah. <clears throat> and go back to... Always exciting. Written excitement. Okay, so here I have the written report. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on edit and I'm going to enable, make sure copy and paste is now enabled. So if yes. I go here, I can see copy and paste is enabled. That's good. So the students are permitted to co copy and paste text. And I go to preview and I'm going to input my name and then I'm going to paste this text into here and then I'm going to click submit. So you'll see the word count is 221. It's more than the target word count, which is okay. And then the 25 minutes left, so I'll click on submit. And that's, that's now submitted. And you'll see that, that uh, straight away, I got a, first of all, I got a confirmation of my submission. Yep. And secondly, I have all of this feedback here. All I have to do is uh, mouse over one of the one of the numbers here, and it will tell me what the problem with the with, in that sentence is. Yeah. So here, for example, we have um, I went to study abroad in Canada, Canada for three months, and the computer's telling me it should be months. Yeah. Perfect. It's, uh, countable is is uh, not correct. Um, what's the problem here? Um, Okay, sometimes students, you know, they, they put too many spaces or something like that. And yep, although it's yep. a minor issue, it is worth pointing out. Oh, it looks terrible when it's yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> or they forget to put a space after periods, you know. Yes, often. Yeah. Which I think has probably happened here. Uh, or let's see, let's see what, what other mistake is picked up here. Uh, we've got a spelling mistake here as well. Fi yep. fi fi finally. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the kind of mistakes it picks up. Um, you know, I, I, I think there's, uh, I'm not sure there's many mistakes in this tech, in, in this passage. Yeah. No, but it's, it, it's given a taste of the kind of things that we'll pick up there. Yeah. yeah. And when we practiced one early before, we got, mm -hmm. we got sort of tense problems, yep. you know, past tense should be present tense. And uh, we got a couple of um, prepositions were wrong. And so it, and, and what I really liked about it is that it wasn't too many. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when you get a sea of red or, you know, just endless mistakes, mm -hmm. um, it, it felt very helpful and supportive, not trying to kill me. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, you, you don't want to overwhelm the students with with uh, with red ink, for example, do you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I have one more example here. Actually, this is another text which we can see. Um, we can see the kind of mistakes it picks up. Good. I'm going to submit this and you'll see. Oh, yeah, more. Yeah, okay. Write or paste your text here to have, obviously pick that up. Yeah. Dif different uh, spelling errors, underlines, yep. um, furthermore. Comma. Yeah. Missing comma errors, the punctuation mark there is wrong. Wow. So, yeah, so these are all the different kind of mistakes it, it will recognize. Yeah. Yeah, that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Good. And then the student can also download the submission. So, um, after they normally after they submit an essay, I tell the students to download their submission so they have a copy they have a copy that on on their own computer. Yeah, that they have got like a, a, uh, evidence of having completed the task. Right. We got a very good question here uh, through somebody in Phil's audience in Facebook. If a teacher uses teacher tools for his exams and tests, can it be hacked 
What about the content security? Uh, we and we uh, basically implement uh, industry standard um, security measures across the site, right? So we we have uh, we use Amazon on our, on on the back end, and Amazon yep. Amazon powers about sixty percent or more of all websites. So you know that that's it's a very um, um, battle tested mm. um, um, solution, you know. I, I often like to give this an analogy. So, do, do you worry about being attacked by a martial arts expert on the street? And people, people usually reply, no. Not, not so much. <laughs> but then you say, well, but if, if you were attacked by a martial arts expert, you wouldn't be able to defend yourself, would you? Nope. So, I mean, it, it's, it, it's kind of like that. that. There's no reason for anyone to, to want to hack the site. Right. Um, and, you know, even if they did, we, we employ industry standard um, techniques across the board. Great. So we're as secure as we can be is, is so, the short answer to that. Great. I, so that's a good ahead. question. That's good to know for anyone who wants to use it for exams and testing. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Paul. And thank you, Zahira, for the question. Um, Paul, can I ask at this point, if uh, I'm very interested in using this with my writing students uh, in a context of first year at university, here mm -hmm. in Japan, students rarely in high school have a chance to write more than, you know, a sentence translation, uh, occasionally a paragraph, but actually write their own material. This mm -hmm. would be wonderful for them. But mm -hmm. I'm wondering how many people can actually, how, what's the volume of what I can run through this. Mm -hmm. That's a good, very good question. So on, we have two um, different tiers of paid accounts. So we have a, a basic account and a plus account. Mm. Um, if you're on the basic account, you can create 100 assignments in total. So, so this, what we just created, you know, studying abroad, yep. that's one assignment. Yeah? Exactly. That's one assignment. My report here is one assignment. Okay. And you can create a hundred assignments. If you delete, if you create a hundred and then delete twenty of them, you can then create twenty more. Oh, so it's kind of just a, a maximum. Yeah. At, at one point, is a hundred. Wow. Yeah, exactly. And then for each assignment, you can accept a hundred submissions. Wow. So, yeah. So um, normally, that's we, we found that to be normally enough um, for most classes that I'm familiar with. Yeah. Perhaps in some contexts in China, for example, they tend to have very big classes of maybe 60 students or 70 students, but even then you, you, it's 100, so it's plenty. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can and see, what... you can see... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Stephen. No, you go ahead. Uh, you can see here it, it says two, two of 500, and that's because I'm, I'm demoing this on, on the plus account. So the plus account gives you 500 assignments, and it gives you 500 submissions per assignment. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's just great. It's more um, than you'll, 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 you'll ever need, I think. <laughs> that the the smaller hundred by a hundred, how much is that going to cost me? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So the so for the pricing, we do um, basically ninety nine dollars a year for the regular account, or nine ninety nine a month. If you want to pay monthly, that's fine. And yearly, we, we give a discount of two months. I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, two months cheaper. Yeah. Yep. And then for the plus account, it's fourteen ninety nine a month or one four nine a year. Hmm. And we do actually have, uh, we offer coupons occasionally, and we're going to be offering a coupon to anyone uh, listening to this webcast, I think, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me about that. Yeah. Yep. So um, oh, should we mention that now or at the sure, end? Sure, sure, sure. If people are yeah. listening. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you have the coupon handy? Um, I think Phil has it. Uh, but the pricing was going to be, I think, instead of 99, it was going to be 79. Yes, exactly. So it's a 20% discount. Yeah. So for the yearly rates, um, that will go down to um, 79 for the year. So sorry, this coupon only applies to the yearly rate, not the monthly rate. Okay. So Good. yeah, it's uh, it, it will be it will bring the price down to 79 for the teacher account or um, one one nine I think for the plus account. Yeah. So we'll, we'll give details of that in a minute. Maybe Phil could copy and paste the coupon code into the Facebook chat as well. Yeah. Okay. Is Phil there? Yeah, Phil's still there. And so we'll yes, do pricing yeah. later at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But that, I wanted to know that right now, just because I want to know how many accounts I can do, how many submissions, and that's real clear to me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so let's move on to the next one, which was going to be the audio recording. Mm -hmm. And again, that was something that was um, highly uh, high interest uh, from the Facebook survey that we did. 
Okay, let me go ahead and, uh, and uh, explain how to create an audio recording. So audio recording is an example of the kind of thing that you can't do without technology of some kind, right? I mean, a, a written report you could arguably do on paper. I mean, you, you obviously <laughs> commonly do on paper, yep. normally do on paper, but audio recording, you know, anything to do with speaking, you can't keep a record of it at all without using technology of some kind. Uh, and I think the way that we do it is, is very, very, very convenient because students only need to have a web browser to be able to submit an assignment. They don't have to have any other special kind of recording equipment. Right. Um, they just need a web browser and a mobile phone and, and, and then they can submit an audio recording assignment to you. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and, mix, and demonstrate how to create an audio recording assignment. Uh, you, again, you put in the title of your assignment. Uh, you can again choose a media prompt. So this media prompt option exists for all the assignment types. Good. Right, so um, let's maybe go for, last time we had an image, let's this time maybe we can go for uh, a rich text format document. And I can say, I don't know, talk about your favorite animal. I'm just gonna put animal in, I'm just gonna highlight, just to show you that, that there's, a, there's a variety of different tools here that you can you know, form, um, format your, the, the text like that, okay? Mm. Click on OK, and that's so the students are going to be responding to this. Um, so um, please record and submit your response. Those are my instructions. And uh, and then OK, the next thing to do, uh, we can uh, specify a time limit again. So students can speak for up to 10 minutes. Great. Yeah. Again, we, we generally find that to be plenty of time, you know, for this kind of activity. You, uh, and you don't want to be listening to, um, you know, if you have, say, 20 students and they're all talking for 10 minutes, that's a lot of a lot of audio to listen to. That's three hours and 20 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. So we tend to I, well, I tend to find that shorter recordings work better in, in many cases. Mm. Uh, and uh, Steve mentioned the TOEFL before. The TOEFL, I think, speaking is, is 45 seconds or, or yep, a minute. Yeah, a minute so, sometimes. Yeah. So I'm just going to go for a minute on this one. And then uh, for the transcripts, um, so the next section is a manual transcript. And again, uh, similar to the written report, this, this allows you to get a thumbnail sketch of the ability of the student uh, in, that, in that report. So mm. what this requires basically is requires the student to transcribe their own speech, okay? So what they will do is they'll record their uh, voice and then they will listen back to their own recording and then they will transcribe it themselves. That sounds great. Yeah. And so that, that, uh, that has a pedagogical value in itself because they're, they're processing the, um, the language twice. Yeah. Right. Once when they, when they speak their answer and then once when they transcribe the, the speech. And there's always that gap between what they thought they were saying in their brains and right. what actually came out. And that's a great reality check, isn't it? Right, right. And it's a great way also to uh, correlate um, written ability with speaking ability. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn this on and then I'm going to set the target word count to say 100 words. So yeah. again, this will analyze the, the transcript based on how many words were written and whether, the, whether they were spelled correctly or not. Okay. Then uh, I'm going to click on save and that will create um, the, uh, the link. And I just click on preview and I can preview the activity in, a, in another tab. And then I'm going to click on type my name. And then I, this is the page that I will see. OK. OK. So I've got the prompt here. Um, talk about your favorite animal. And I've got the instructions here. And I've got the record button here. Very, very, I'm very looking simple. forward to what your favorite animal is. Are you <laughs> going to do this for us a little? I can do. Yeah. Do we, yeah. we have time? Yeah. Let's yeah, take okay. a, 30 seconds or so. OK. So. Uh, this again, just, just to say that this is a cross device compatible, all, all the activities are cross device compatible, they'll work on iPhone, on tablet, on Android, desktop, laptop, you know, whatever device your students use, it, it should work as long as it's a modern uh, browser. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on record. Uh, let me just think for one second. Um, <laughs> uh, my You're lucky I'm not giving you the animal. <laughs> My favorite animal is a penguin because penguins are very cute and um, funny. Okay, that was a bit of a lame answer, but okay, just ignore that. Um, okay, and I, what, after, as soon as I finish recording, 
uh, I can listen back to my voice to make sure that it was, you know, there was no mistakes and, uh, and you know, everything was recorded correctly. So I'm just going to click on the I think I'm button. at the beginning there. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, let me see if I'm, I have to reshare the sound here. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, my favorite. You're lucky I'm not giving you the animal. Oh, Stephen was speaking over me then. So I can actually um, but, but yours. Yeah. I can re-record that if, if, if you know, my, my mother walks in and offers me a cup of tea or something, or, you know, a, a train goes past and, 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 and cuts out my voice, I can re-record this as many times as I want. Yeah. But I'm just going to go ahead and, and submit this one. So I'm going to listen to what I said, and I'm going to transcribe it here. So my favorite animal is a penguin, because penguins are very cute and um, funny. Uh, Okay, so that's the uh, that's the transcript, and yep. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and click on submit, and then that will go directly into the teacher's dashboard, which is shown here. Okay, you can see now that this uh, audio recording has one submission. Yeah. So as soon as the student submits it, it becomes available to the teacher to to view. And you'll see that also there was a, the feedback is shown. So after the student submitted, um, they got uh, the audio recording again for them to double check was received correctly. And they got their transcript and they have a chance to download the recording as well. Oh, wonderful. So after they submit again, that they can download a, a copy for their own um, for their own peace of mind. Yeah. Um, and you see that the, the score was 13%. Because I set uh, a target word count of 100 words, um, but I only wrote about 15 or 20 words. Yeah. So that's why it's um, 13%. I've got a couple of questions Phil's put in. Thank you, Phil. Um, is it possible to set the time less than one minute? That's a good question. Uh, no, but students can speak for less than one minute. Sure. So you, you'll see I, I only spoke for about 12 seconds. Yeah. Um, so the, the minimum time for the assignment setting is one minute, but students can speak for less than that if they want. Yeah. yeah. And um, somebody's saying here, can I share an account with another teacher? <laughs> um, we would strongly request and, and advise you not to do so. Right. Uh, well, you're have... buying one account, yeah. right? For yourself, for your yes, students. Yes. yes, yes. 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 Uh, we, we, we would we would prefer you to to buy to purchase your own account. We, we do have uh, institutional accounts. So if you have uh, um, from upwards of three teachers yep. uh, working in the same school, we offer discounts and special um, deals for institutions. And people should contact you about that. Uh, yes, the, please, please contact us. Um, if you go to our marketing site, www.hikatools.digital, and you'll see a school option here. Um, so, and there's a contact us button here, and, Great. and that's what we recommend. We, we, we would strongly um, uh, request you not to share a, an account. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're, uh, time is uh, flying by, and so I would like to go into the, uh, I guess we just say that the speaking recording is mm -hmm. very similar to this, right? Or the, um, the video recording is, very, yes. yeah, it's very similar to this audio recording, right? It's almost exactly, well, set, setting up a video recording is exactly the same as setting up a, uh, an audio recording. Yeah. Um, but video is good in situations if you, if you care about eye contact and gesture and you want to verify the student is who they say they are because you're doing a high stakes assessment or something like that, uh, then, then you also have an option of creating a video recording as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think you're right saying that it's a whole lot of bandwidth and everything else if... Yeah people are just doing speaking practice, maybe this is more appropriate for interview practice or mm -hmm. some kind of thing like that. Yeah, yeah, and students, uh, some students are, are a bit camera shy or you sure. know, they, they don't, they're not in a, in a, in a suitable environment to, to, to make a video. And I know we're all very, we're all Zoom obsessed uh, recently. <laughs> right, right. But uh, a lot of students, in my experience, they don't like to have their camera on in, in the Zoom session. So uh, yeah. an audio is, is a good option to have, I think. Yeah. Somebody's asked, I'm not sure how the how you answer this, but what's the minimum bandwidth people need to use this site? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I have a fiber optic 
connection, and but I I'm on Wi-Fi right now. Uh, if you're talking, I think you mentioned that we had some people in the audience from Afghanistan and other countries. Sure, sure. I can't really say I've never visited those countries, so I'm not really sure of the average speed of the connection. But for submitting audio and video, you probably want to have a fairly decent connection. Yeah. And Sorry, you I have the remember. one month free trial for people yeah. to go in and try all of these activities, right? Exactly. And yeah. one thing worth mentioning here, when you sign up, you can actually choose your data storage location. So we have uh, we have data centers in uh, Europe, in Australia, in Asia, and in uh, America. Mm -hmm. So you can choose whichever one is nearest to your location, and that will speed up the upload and download considerably as well. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. Mm. Okay. In the interest, was that you, Phil? Yep. Okay. Any? Uh, we're. I want to move on to the next one and just yep. say that. Um, I think if people go back and anybody can pick up this recording later, um, I did want to try to go through them, but we're running out of time. So I'd like Paul to move us into the text to test um, activity, which was the most popular among teachers on Facebook who wanted to actually see what that was all about. Okay, let's talk about text to test. So text to test is, an, is uh, a way to, um, to deliver a listening and reading uh, uh, practice uh, passage, and also to automatically generate uh, vocabulary questions and grammar questions, so it's it's kind of the whole package. Yeah. Right. So what you the the clue is in the name here. So first of all, you have to start with a text. Right? Okay. So you need to have some kind of text that you want to use for this activity. Sorry, um, just one I, sec. Can yeah. you um can you make your screen a little bigger? Uh, how's that? There we go. And uh, okay. I don't know if you can zoom in or not. Uh, Phil was saying some people are on uh, phones and stuff. Um, I can maybe try hiding. I can maybe try going to full screen. How's that? That's a little better. Thank you. Oh, that's going to hide my tabs, though. Let, no. let, me just, let me just copy the text and then I can go full screen. OK. Yeah. Uh, so I was going to mention, actually, um, I often use uh, Wikipedia for finding text for this. And because simple uh, English. It's yeah, this is simple English Wikipedia and, uh, you know, all the text is available for free, copyright free. So it's a good place to find texts uh, to do these kind of activities with. Yeah. Yeah. So you can go to the regular Wikipedia and then you just replace the EN with the simple and it will give you a simplified version. Nice. So I'm going to go down uh, back to my account. Uh, was it this one? Yeah. OK, so I'm going to put in the title of my assignment which is going to be England yeah and uh, I'm not I'm, I'm not going to choose a media prompt this time I'll leave that blank yeah uh, I have to make sure that um, the language settings are set up correctly so the first one is the language of the text yeah so I said before we do support French German and Spanish but this particular text is in English so that's English it's good and then the definitions we support 14 different languages so if you are teaching students whose L1 is Italian we support that if, if their L1 is Japanese, we support that. And you can see the other languages as well here. Okay. And so I'm going to give the definitions of the words should be in English in this case. So that's, yeah, that's a higher level class. They yeah. can deal with English definitions. So there we go. Exactly. So I'm going to put, I'm going to paste my text in here. I'm going to just tidy up things a little bit. Okay. Let me get rid of the uh, spaces here. That looks good. Okay, so that's that's a, a nice text there. Then I'm going to click on process. And what that will do is actually save me a lot of time. So normally, you know, as a teacher, what you might do is you might go through the text and think, oh, my students don't know the word aisles. Yeah, um, I, I'd better teach them what the word aisles mean before I before they read the text, right? Yeah. Or my students don't know the word, I don't know, St. George. Uh, yeah. I better teach them about St. George. So this activity will save you a lot of time by providing those definitions for you. So if we go down, you'll see um, a list of definitions here, right? Mm. So all you have to do is, whichever definitions you want the students to be able to uh, check, you just, uh, you just uh, select them. Sorry, were these definitions automatically generated or did you input oh, them? Automatically generated, yeah. All, all, all I had to do is, is put in the text. Yeah, wow. And then uh, you can see uh, it, the, the program has come back and suggested that these are, these are some words that, you know, 
we have definitions for, and would you like to teach right. the students what these words mean? And right. are there more than these four, or is that yeah. just what they pulled? There's, 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 there's many, 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 oh, right? Oh, wow. So just okay. scroll down. Virtually every word in the text is included. Wow. Um, okay, but, great. We, we, we start, it's in, it's, in, it's in order of length. So obviously yeah. it's not that useful to teach students words like ah. You know, sure, 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 sure. It, yeah. It's, yeah. it's not the best way to do it. Um, so we, we start with the longest words. Yep, yeah. great. Okay. Um, I think I mentioned St. George before. Let's see if St. George is in here. I don't think it is, but we have uh, we have patron saints. So yeah, that's it, it, does, good. it picks up um, phrases as well as words. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to go with these four because I think uh, that's enough. I think the general idea is you shouldn't try to learn more than, say, five words in one sitting. Okay. I think that's a Paul Nation. Um, sure is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, piece of advice. Um, and then the grammar section, uh, you can choose which sentences you would like to check the student's grammar knowledge with. So I'm just going to check again, it includes all the sentences in the, in the text. Um, but I'm just going to choose the first four. Yeah. Okay. And this will generate a grammar activity. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a voice because I want students to listen to this text at the same time, same time as reading the text. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a voice. I'm going to, I'm going to choose um, a British voice. I'm going to choose a, uh, a female British voice. Amy is, is, a, is a very nice, clear voice. Okay. But when I say choose a voice, people might be wondering what I'm talking about. We, 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 we uh, every, well, many of the assignment types on teacher tools allow you to convert uh, a written text to a spoken text using a technology called text to speech. Okay. So that's what this is going to do. So let's, uh, so all my settings are, I think, uh, good now. I'm going to click on save. And that take, that took you probably in real time uh, about a minute. Yep, yep, it's very, very quick and uh, easy. And, you know, even if you decide that you want to modify these uh, definitions, you can do that. Yep. So say, uh, you know, this is one that's a bit long, I can just delete this section and, and then, you know, that's fine. Wow. So the, the teacher can spend a, a, as long or, or as much or as little time as they want, um, kind of um, um, refining these definitions if, if they yep. want to do that. Good, yeah. good. And they can also add custom words. Now I'm, I'm getting excited to see what's coming out of this. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of uh, ranking up the tension here, aren't I? You are. You're, yeah. you're, you're teasing me. I'm going to click on update and I'm going to click on preview. Hmm. And that will hopefully. Uh, what's happening here? Hang on. Okay, there we go. Uh, again, put in my name and it's going to take a second to load the uh, text to speech. There we go. Okay, so I've wow. got the text here, and I've got an audio recording here, and I, I can click to play, and then students can listen to the text and read it at the same time. Are you ready for this? Yes, yes. Here we go. England is a country in Europe. It is a country with over 60 cities in it. It is in a union with Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. So I think you'll agree that that, that is a, an incredibly high quality voice there. Yeah, I like um, Amy. Amy, Amy is one of the higher quality voices that we have. And I, I mean, in my opinion, it's virtually indistinguishable from a, from a real human. Yeah, voice. it doesn't sound like a robot at all. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously you can, if you, if you want to and you have the time, you can, you can add your own voice to any of these assignments, okay? Because we have the media prompt option, right? Right. And the media prompt option allows you to record audio. Yeah, but I'm, I'm happy to have yeah. You know, the choice of choosing yeah. nationalities and male female voices exactly so we yeah. have a choice you can either use your own voice or if you're pushed for time or you, yeah. you're not particularly um don't particularly want to use your own voice you can do it this way uh, and as you as you can see when as, as the audio plays the the different parts of text are highlighted as it yes plays. it is in a union with scotland wales and northern ireland okay Amazing. and before the next section um, will will show the vocabulary that the, that the teacher selected. So normally, you know, with vocabulary learning uh, applications like Quizlet, for example, it's all decontextualized. You have no context for those words. Right. The student doesn't know where those words came from or how they're used in a sentence. Yeah. Yeah. This, you know, this way of learning vocabulary is much more natural because mm. it appears in context. That's also a pollination. Yeah. Um, tip hey yeah. to put everything in a lot context. of my 
a lot of my uh, my pedagogical theory comes from uh, people like Paul Nation. Yeah, I think, yeah. I, think he, I mean, he, he's done a lot of meta studies where he's basically amalgamated the very best theories from other researchers, right? Yep, so, yep. That, it's a good, so, um, so yeah, the student clicks on the word to see the definition. And then the next section, um, they, they have to match the definitions to the to the words. Well, the phrase there, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Okay. So that would be United Kingdom. Yep. The um, next one is a city that is the seat of government of a state or nation. Capital city. Yep. Protective saint, saint that is especially sacred to a certain region. Uh, Pat patron saint. Patron saint, yeah. Yep. And then uh, part of the United Kingdom region belonging to Great Britain would be Northern Ireland. Yep. Wow. That's it. So that's the vocabulary section is finished. Yep. And then I, I get the grammar section. So anyone who's familiar with the likes of Duolingo, for example, Duolingo yep. um, has these kind of uh, ran, um, shuffled, uh, randomized yep. uh, sentences. And this is a good way to show for the student to show that they're able to understand the grammar of a sentence. Is this a click or a drag? It's a click. OK. Yeah, dragging. Uh, we, we, we tested dragging on, on mobile. It's just a bit fiddly. So it's sure. a click. Yeah. OK, click. England, England is, is yeah, a country in Europe. There we go. And let me make this a bit bigger. There yeah. we go. How's that? Yeah, better. It is a country with over 60 cities in it. Nice. Yep. OK. Uh, it is in a union with, no, Scotland, yep. Wales, and Northern Ireland. I yep. see. Yeah. All four countries are. Oh, all four countries are uh, in the British Isles and are part of the United Kingdom. There we go. Okay, then that's the grammar section is finished and then the student just clicks on submit. And then at the end of the activity, they will get the feedback 100%. They can see all the vocabulary items again and they can see all the sentences again as well. Wow. Great, Paul. There's uh, somebody was asking, can they see what will happen if you make a mistake? Oh, yes, uh, on this activity. Uh, what sure. will happen if I make a mistake is better warn them they're gonna blow up or something. <laughs> <laughs> the computer is gonna melt in front of their eyes. Um, call two. Uh, if I make a mistake on this activity, it will tell me it will show me that which one was correct, right? So yep. if I click here on Capital City, there's an X there and the, and the correct one. And maybe it was a bit fast, actually. <laughs> but uh, Do it you, again. Just click on Capital O. Yeah, yeah. The, the checked item is shown, basically. Yep. You know, so um, there. Oh, there we go. Yep. Yeah. I probably need to slow that down a little bit, actually. Maybe yeah. slow it down a little. Yeah. Yeah. And the next one, the next activity here. Can, this, oh. this one uh, doesn't give you feedback until the end. Oh, OK. So you don't get immediate feedback on this, but you will get feedback at the end. So, yeah, okay. and the same the same with the vocabulary as well actually so yeah you, you will get feedback at the end uh, uh oh all, we're crashing and burning here <laughs> all questions uh you can see here now so this was wrong yeah you said, you said capital city you should have said patron saint good yeah this was wrong patron saint it should have been capital city i'm starting to feel bad etc and here okay. um for the for the gamma items it only highlights in red the, the parts that were wrong yeah so mm. I, I got Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. That was right, but this part wasn't right. Got it. Yeah. Hmm. So those those are the three activity types I think we had time to cover. Uh, yeah. I don't think we have time for anything else, but we probably have time for more questions. Yeah. Um, Phil, do we want to try to offer if anybody wants to come in and talk directly with Paul? Hmm. Um, and maybe as you're sorting that out, I think uh for anybody who's joined late we i i do want to review uh the pricing just a little bit on how yep. reasonable and this special offer that you gave to uh people here tonight or through itdi through our partnership with itdi yep and i'm going to put the coupon code on on the screen as well at this point okay yeah so Great. let me just do that now let me get prepare the document here uh oops So, okay. Yeah, when I first, oh, there we go. Yeah. So, um, yes, the pricing, again, just to cover it, it's $9.99 a month or $99 a year for the uh, basic account. And by paying the yearly, we save actually two months, don't we? You do. You save two months on the yearly 
Yeah. And if you use this coupon code, when you purchase your subscription, you will yep. save an additional 20% on top of that. Oh, wow. So it'll go down to $79 a year. And, and then what happens if I buy this for this year and then does it go back to the regular price next year? It doesn't know. Actually, this uh, coupon will remain valid for as long as that subscription remains active. Really? Yep. So you sign up at $79 this year and then yep. 2022, uh, if, if you renew your subscription, it will, uh, the discount will apply to that, to that as well. So that's like so, a lifetime loyalty discount. Pretty much. I mean, we, we, we try not to offer a guarantee of this being around for life, <laughs> yeah, for <sure. laughs> you know, but uh, at the moment, uh, yes, it will, it will apply uh, in um, for would subsequent be the renewals. Yeah. Foreseeable future yes, for the loyal future. discount. <laughs> yes, for the foreseeable future. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's very generous of you, Paul. Thank yeah. you. And the Teacher Plus, again, it also applies to this one as well. Yeah. Uh, only on the yearly rate, though. So it will bring yep. the yearly rate down to $119, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Phil, are you uh, inviting people into anybody yeah. who wants to come in? If um, So what we're going to do is in about a minute or so, when we've wrapped up, we will stop the recording here. But yep. uh, we are inviting everyone to join us in the Zoom room. Mm. So you can join us. Uh, it won't be on Facebook Live, but it will be just in a Zoom room where you can come, talk to us, talk to Paul, and ask any other questions that you may have. And we'll mm. keep that open for another 15 minutes or so after. Yeah, that'd be great. Backstage pass. Paul, uh, I remember we had a course with ITDI a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I, I thought that you were clear then, but tonight I thought you were perfectly, you've either done this a million times <laughs> or you've got your teacher talk down to uh, mm -hmm. science because that I thought it was very thorough, very clear. And uh, I'm glad. Um, originally, you were the developer and the designer of this mm -hmm. whole website, hey? Yeah, I, I still am really. Uh, we, we don't really have a big, uh, we don't have well any kind of um, um, development team behind this. It's all been developed by myself, uh, having taught in Japanese universities for over 10 years, you know, and, and, and knowing the kind of activities that are actually used by teachers and knowing yep. the kind of problems that teachers face in their classrooms, you know, so I think that's what makes this, in my opinion, superior to other, other options out there. It's the automaticity as well, right? That that things just happen automatically, feedback and yeah. and uh, yeah, and and it seems like the learning curve is is very intuitive right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all everything is auto graded. Everything can be auto graded, right? Yeah, that's a very important principle for us. Is that everything is possible to be auto graded? Although the writing and the the speaking is is as I said, a thumbnail sketch of, of the student's ability and shouldn't be relied on entirely. Right. Uh, it, it, it's a big time saver. Do you see this question? Uh, somebody's put, is it possible to provide personalized feedback to assignments? Is there an option to add in uh, feedback? This is something I, I kind of would have liked to talk about, but perhaps if we, if we, if we can do this again, you know, uh, that's something we could cover. Yeah. We, 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 have, we have a very comprehensive uh, feedback uh, system. So, so the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Uh, yeah. so the short answer is yes. Right. Uh, and let me just quickly show what, what that looks like. So what you would do is you go into your submission screen yep. and you click on the give feedback button and that will allow you to give uh, either a, a written comment, uh, a recorded audio comment or even a recorded video comment. Oh, wow. In response to the audio recording assignment type, the yep. essay or the video report. Wow. So these three, uh, let me go back to here one second. Uh, these three assignment types, the audio recording, the video recording, and the written report, you can give manual feedback, uh, personal feedback on these three assignment types. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, somebody's asked a question here, which I think that there is the create up to a hundred assignments. Mm -hmm. They've, they're asking is that per month and it's not per month, it's per no. year. But if it's you're going to give a class a hundred assignments, that means you're giving them more than three a day mm -hmm. per month, right? A hundred assignments. I mean, that, that, that's in total. Yes. So, so, so yeah, if you, if, um, and remember you can reuse assignments. So you, yep. you know, you, 
you wouldn't be, uh, yeah, 100 assignments is in total, so you could delete 20 and, and create 20 more. So I, basically, I have in Japan here, we have 15 weeks mm -hmm. and I give what I want to do in, in this site in the written report is give essays, but I'm not going to give more than 10 or 12 essays to a yeah. first year class. Right. We're going to do other kinds of things that are kind of, you know, um, identifying topic sentences and mm -hmm. brainstorming synonyms and stuff like that, which are not going to be in this written report. But as far as nobody's going to do a hundred assignments on, you know, in, but, but as you said, you just have to clear some of them out yeah. in order to free up space yeah. uh, to offer new ones. Based on the feedback that we've had, um, that's a good a good number for the basic account for, for for power users and people who are relying on this a lot a lot more comprehensively. We have the plus level, which is five hundred, yeah, uh, which I use and I I I was teaching entirely online for the whole of twenty twenty, um, and um, I had you know about twenty classes a week, uh, each with twenty five students in each class. Wow, and uh, the five hundred assignments I didn't even get close to that. Good. You know, so yeah, it's more than enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Phil, are you uh, shutting down, or have you shut down the Facebook? Not yet. We're still live on Facebook. Um, we're just going to be wrapping up, but we are dropping the link in one more time for anyone who'd like to join us in the Zoom room. Um, which this is in Japan. What's called a Niji Kai where we just have a little, uh, you know, it's like you have the main party and then you move on to another restaurant for an after party. So if yeah. anybody wants to come in and say hi or introduce yourself or even tell us about your context, where you're teaching, what kind of students you have, um, ask questions or not ask questions. We're just going to hang out for the next 15 or 20 minutes and um, see what see what comes out of it. Please okay. do join us. I'd love to meet some of you and um, to talk to you and figure out how we can help you. Please join us. Yes, yeah. and I'm just going to let you know, Paul, because you probably haven't seen this, but you've got a couple of super fans in the audience who have said thank you very much. They're really happy using Teach Tools and they want to Great. keep on using Teach Tools. And it's been really nice to have a chance to meet you and Steve online. So that's yeah. great. Thank you. Jump thank backstage you for that, yeah. as well afterwards. We, uh, we 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 love having you on the platform. And we love super fans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Paul and Steve, for your time and taking us through those three examples on Teach Tools. And welcome, Kevin, into the room. Uh, going Phil, your... you're gonna yep. we're going to make this uh, recording available as well through yep. the ITDI the page. Will, the recording will automatically be available on the page shortly. And then we'll also uh, get around to showing on our... YouTube channel later to be able to pass on to people who aren't necessarily on Facebook. Wonderful. So once again, thank you very much. That's all from me. Thanks, Phil. Good job. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Thank you.